right, so steady yourself. Next year, it will be 30 years since an iconic movie was made right here in Minnesota. Grumpy Old Men became a classic and ushered in an era of Tinseltown coming to the land of 10,000 lakes. In tonight's Maury Stories, Maury Glover takes a look at why the film was shot here and its lasting legacy. It's a neighborhood bar and it's been around for so long that, you know, people just know it from being in St. Paul. Halftime Rec in the Como Park neighborhood is known for the bocce ball court in the basement. But its other claim to fame is its connection to one of the most iconic movies ever made in Minnesota. It's a big part of the tradition here. People come in just to say they had a beer at the bar from Grumpy Old Men. The bar is featured in a pivotal scene in Grumpy Old Men. All right. Starring Jack Lemmon Touch. and Walter Matthau as two bickering neighbors feuding over the affections of new neighbor Ann Margaret. I get it. What do you mean, forget it? Right where this jukebox is, they put a temporary wall up here. Manager Steve Mars says from the pictures behind the bar to the instantly recognizable red door, there are nods to the watering hole's cinematic past. But it was the Christmas lights that convinced location scouts it would be the perfect place to film a scene set on Christmas Eve. When you talk about a movie that is so iconic for a Christmas movie and being shot in Minnesota, it's a big deal for the state to say, you know, to have our state attached to that movie. Oh, you know, in a lot of ways, Grumpy Old Men's the one that's put us on the map. The head of the Minnesota Film Board at the time, Randy Adamsick, says Grumpy Old Men was shot in Minnesota in early 1993 because it was written by Hastings native Mark Stephen Johnson from his memories of going fishing with his grandfather. Even though the movie is set in Wabasha, it was actually filmed at various locations around the Twin Cities, as well as Fairbow. George, are you all right? Yes, an angel. Red Wing. <laughs> and Lake Rebecca in Rockford. You, you're an artist? Mm, I try. While the interiors of the main characters' houses were recreated on sound stages at Paisley Park. Grumpy Old Men was very special because it was a homegrown Minnesota story. Adam Six says Lemon and Mathau decided to do the movie because they wanted to work together again, decades after co starring in classics like The Odd Couple. And while they didn't like the cold, they adjusted to winter here in Minnesota and were a dream team on the set. Jack and Walter and Ann Margaret were just. just the best people ever. Um, they were they were just so polite to everyone, you know, uh, ready to give autographs when asked, um, pose for pictures. You know, they were just gracious as they can be. The movie was released later that year and became a sleeper hit, spawning a sequel which added Sophia Loren to the cast. But Adam Six says, more importantly, it gave the rest of the world a glimpse of life in Minnesota and ushered in a golden era of major movies being filmed here in the 90s. They were looking for cheaper locations than Hollywood. And we happened to have the ingredients, and the ingredients were really great locations, a great acting pool because of the theater scene, great crew because we had been a big center for shooting commercials and, and the equipment. Uh, and then when we got the sound stage of Paisley Park, that was like the last piece of the puzzle. Listen, then all the furniture goes straight to the Well-known character actor John Carroll Lynch got his first film role playing a mover who tries to evict Lemon's character from his house. We got a what? problem here, sir. What is it? Somebody's barricaded the doors. He credits the parts he played in a handful a of films made in Minnesota what? in the 90s, including Marge Gunderson's husband Norm in Fargo, I love you, Margie. I love you, Norm. With allowing him to move from the Guthrie Theater to Los Angeles, where he's had a lengthy career. For me, as an actor, I grew up there. I figured out how to act there. My career began there. My film career began there. I met my wife there. I met my daughters there. I have friends there. It will always be um, a home state for me. This was Ann Margaret's house in the movie. The house John Halfin grew up in on Hyacinth Avenue near Lake Phelan also plays a major role in the movie, as do a couple of other houses across the street. He says his father John, a World War II vet, didn't want to be bothered by a Hollywood film crew until neighbors pressured him and he received $12,000 as well as new roofing, shutters and siding for participating. It was uh, just uh, 
a perfect match for what they wanted to do. And then lots of snow that they could have on the lawn and for snowmobiles and uh, lakes around with the fishing and uh, just a real typical Minnesota kind of a setting. Halfin says his dad eventually enjoyed hanging out with the stars who would talk with him on his porch between scenes. His father has since passed away and the house was sold a couple of years ago. But Halfin is grateful his childhood home has been immortalized on the silver screen. I think it just goes to show that you know you can make movies in Minnesota, you can make nice movies and you can make movies that people really enjoy. You know, I think people enjoy movies about people like them, and I think that's what this movie was. Caught my limit! For Maury stories. I see you only snagged one, huh? Maury Glover, Fox 9.